I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft or welcome back if you're an existing subscriber. It's so nice to have you here and thank you for watching my latest video. And today's video is one of my favourite types of video to watch if I'm watching other people's channel channels. It is a fabric haul video. And I love fabric haul videos. I love um, seeing what people have chosen fabrics wise, seeing what's out there and also what they're planning to make. And I'm really looking forward to sharing with you the fabrics I've got today. And I'm hoping to get some of them sewn up in August. But I do have a bit of a busy August this month. Um, it's the school holidays here, so I've got my two children off school. And we have got a couple of weeks away planned, which will be really lovely. But I am planning on leaving my sewing machine at home. So I won't have as much time for sewing as I would normally have. And also they're around in the day, so I'll kind of just be squeezing a bit of sewing in the evenings here and then. So I won't get as much sewn up as usual. But I have got some really nice fabrics I'm looking forward to sewing with, so I hope I will have a chance to do a bit of sewing this month. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing those all with you. But first of all, let me um, share with you what I'm wearing today. And today it's actually quite a sunny day here. It didn't say on the forecast it was going to be very warm, but I'm dressed kind of optimistically in a t-shirt and shorts, which are both me made. And I'll share the top first. Um, it's a really nice basic t-shirt pattern. And it's this pattern here is the Scout Tee by Grainline Studio and I made two of these a while ago and I haven't made them since but I do like getting them out because they're quite a nice classic t-shirt shape. So it's designed for woven fabrics which I think is quite nice. Um, it's a basic t-shirt with a slightly scooped neck and I quite like how the neckline's finished. It's finished with bias binding. I think this pattern was the first time I'd tried finishing a neckline with bias binding and I really love the finish it gives. I think it's quite pretty and um, yeah it gives a nice, really nice finish. It's a beginner pattern but I guess you learn a little bit of a new skill with the um, putting the bias binding on the neckline and then inserting the sleeves and things. So there's a couple of things to learn. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice straightforward pattern and can really showcase a pretty fabric because it's so simple. And I've got the um, paper pattern, which goes from sizes 0 to 18. But Grainline also have a um, larger size range on this pattern from 14 to 30 available on their website. So that's really good. Um, but yeah, it's quite a simple sew. What I like about it also is um, it doesn't really require much fabric. So I made the smallest size, I think, on this pattern, which is size zero. And um, the measurements for that are size, a bust 32, waist 25, hips 35. And I'm 32, 26, 36. But the finished garment measurements come up a bit bigger than my size. So I thought I'd just give that a go and I quite like the fit. Um, so um, and it says on here, for a 54 inch wide fabric, you need um, one and five eighths yards of fabric, but I've found, and I think that I've been able to squeeze this top into a metre of fabric, so I don't think you need quite as much fabric as the pattern state, so it's quite a nice little scrap buster of a pattern. Um, but yeah, I made mine in this Atelier Brunette fabric, I think it's called Tabby Viscose, in a kind of creamy colour. I don't know if it's still available, but it's really pretty, it's got little flecks of different colours on. And it's quite nice and lightweight and drapey, so perfect for a t-shirt. And also, I think I did just buy one metre, so it didn't end up too pricey because the Telly Brunette fabrics are a bit more pricey. They're lovely, but they are a bit more pricey. But that's what I'm wearing on top, um, a Scout tee. And then I've teamed it with a pair of Flint shorts, which is this pattern here by Megan Nielsen. Um, it's a really nice um, sort of trousers and shorts pattern with a kind of um, sort of cinched in waist um, around, your, around your high waist. And then it's got little slash pockets, a nice kind of little sort of pleating details at the front and back to give shaping. And then it kind of goes out into kind of like a wide leg trouser or culotte where you can crop it off shorts. And there are two tie options. It's not that easy to see on the pattern, but you can either make a little tie here or a little button. Um, and I've got the tie version on. I'll show you my little tie here. And yeah, I made these in um, a red um, linen viscose mix. Um, so they're a little bit, it's, I think it's a higher viscose than linen content, so they're a bit drapey and they don't hold the structure of the shorts well, but they're really comfy to wear. Um, and I'll put up a picture so you can see the outfit. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice, comfy, relaxed one to wear. Um, and oh, in terms of sizing on the flint shorts, um, my pattern, which is a paper pattern, goes from size 0 to size 20. And um, there's also Megan Nielsen have a curve range, which is for sizes 14 to 30. And they've got the flint um, in the curve range too. So yeah, a really nice inclusive size range on this one as well as the Scout tee. And I think, I can't remember which size I made on these, but I do generally find Megan Nielsen patterns for woven fabrics to be quite true to size. So I think I just went with my waist and my hips measurements and it came out fine. And because I've made the tie version, there was a little bit of wiggle room, so you can kind of tie it kind of tighter or a bit looser. Um, so I think that gives a little bit of flexibility on the waistline of this one too, which is quite nice. But that's what I'm wearing today. Um, now let me move on to showing you um, the new fabrics I've got this month. 
So the first fabric I've got to share with you is a French terry fabric, um, which is by See You at Six. And I got it from Lamazi Fabrics. And um, I love the See You at Six French terry range. Um, every year when they bring out new fabrics, I'm like, oh no, because <laughs> I always love them. I've made a couple of things with their French terries before. I made a Jarrah um, sweatshirt that has a tie um, in a green colour way of their French terry fabric. And um, I wear that loads. And I also made a um, paper cut patterns solar um, sweatshirt, again, in their French terry in a pink colour. And I've worn them both loads because I love, um, ha I just love the feel of them. They're lovely and soft and cosy and they wash really well, but they're not too super heavyweight. So they're perfect for like layering, but not getting too hot. So they're perfect for a sweatshirt, in my opinion. But as I said, the latest range came out and I couldn't resist this one here. And um, yeah, it's a bit creased because I've washed it, but it's really cute. Um, it's a kind of really pale pink colour that the camera, I think, finds a bit hard to pick out. And then it's got these lovely, um, quite large um, oranges on there, slice of orange. I think they, they're slice of orange, but they do almost look in real life a bit yellow. So they almost look more like lemons. And I quite like the kind of yellow and pink combination on the fabric. But yeah, I just couldn't resist it. I thought it was super cute. I thought it would make a really fun sweatshirt. And I actually also bought, along with this fabric, I bought the matching ribbing, just a half a metre of the matching ribbing. So you can't really see it very well, but it's the same um, pale pink colour. It goes perfectly with the fabric. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sewing these up into a sweatshirt. Because, um, yeah, as I said, I just love the other two and I've got so much wear out of them. I'm not sure which sweatshirt pattern I'm going to use for these fabrics. Um, I've got a couple of options I'm considering. The first one is the Grain Line Studio Linden sweatshirt, which is a really nice, um, straightforward sweatshirt pattern with raglan sleeves. And I haven't made one of those for ages. And um, this one comes in sizes zero to 18 and unfortunately isn't um, in the Grain Line Studio extended size range. I'm hoping they might add it soon because it's such a classic pattern. Um, and then the other one I was thinking of is you might already know probably my favourite sweatshirt pattern, which is the Megan Nielsen Jarrah, which is a fab sweatshirt that comes in lots of different options. So I've made um, this version here with a tie already in CU6 fabric, as I mentioned. So I probably wouldn't make that one again, but I'd be quite tempted just to make the kind of classic um, version with the drop shoulders, just quite a relaxed sweatshirt shape. Just because this fabric is so cool and such a sort of bold, big print, I don't want to make anything too fussy because I want it to be all about the print with this one. But I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up. It might be one that doesn't actually get sewn up until September, just because I guess it's not really sweatshirt weather at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. and I'm glad I got the matching ribbing because I had a sweatshirt I made a while ago, um, a pink cuff fabric, and I really struggled to get ribbing that work with it. And I ended up going with a kind of contrast ribbing. I think I did a grey, a dark grey ribbing to go with the pink, which I liked, but um, it was a bit of a faff trying to find something that worked. So I, I thought if I get the matching ribbing for this, it'll all look really smart. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing with that one. See you at six, French Terry. Um, if you have any opinions um, on a pattern or another sweatshirt pattern you particularly like, I would love to hear. Um, I'm really open to suggestions on that one. That's my first fabric. So the next fabric I bought this month also came from Lamazi Fabrics. And um, yeah, I was looking for fabric with a particular project in mind and I came across this fabric and thought it would be perfect. And this one is by Rifle Paper Co. And it's a really lovely cotton fabric, um, as you can see here. It's got a black base and it's got all these really pretty different wildflowers on. I think it's called Hawthorn um, Black Cotton and it's part of their Strawberry Fields collection. So yeah, loads of different pretty wildflowers on. I just love the, the mixture and the colours there. Um, and I love the fact that it's on a black base too. And I really love um, Rifle Paper Co fabrics. I think they're so beautiful and the colours are so lovely. I've only, I think I've only made one garment before. I made a Stevie top in one of their viscoses, which is really lovely quality. Um, but yeah, I saw this and it was on special on Lamazi's website. I think it just had a little bit of money off um, per half metre. So I thought, oh, I'm going to get that while it's um, on special. And um, yeah, it's really lovely, actually. I, I messaged them because I wasn't sure um, from the description on the website how um, heavyweight it would be. And they messaged back, they're so good at responding um, really fast, and they messaged back and said it was similar to kind of like a quilting cotton. So yeah, it's a bit heavier weight than a cotton poplin, and it's got a really nice sort of softness to it. It's kind of almost feels slightly brushed, a little bit of softness anyway. Um, but yeah, I really love it. So it's really nice. It's a fairly substantial, it's, it's nice and opaque, and I thought it'd be perfect for my project. And what I want to make with this, well, actually, I've already started making this one, because when I bought it, I couldn't resist getting started, because I was really excited about what I wanted to make is um, I want to make a hack of the Ogden cami top. And um, if you watch my July makes vlog, 
You know I made a hack of the Ogden cami top last month too and I hacked it into a, a tiered dress in a in, um, tencel and it was very swishy and summery and lightweight and I enjoyed that so much it started to get me thinking um, I'd like to make another hack but a more wintry version and so I'd like to make um, I'd like to make with this fabric a version that's for winter to be used as a layering piece and I've seen lots of um, lovely um, looks on the high street and on Instagram of people layering up and kind of making kind of a kind of cami sole style dress and then layering up tops underneath and I think um, recently Friday Pattern Company um, brought out I think it's called the oh, is it called the saltwater slip dress I'm not sure but they brought out a slip dress as well and I've seen some lovely layers of that one but I thought what well, I'd like to make um, one myself using a pattern I already have so I thought I'd use the Ogden cami as a base given I'd enjoyed hacking that so much before so I love the Ogden cami it's a really um, straightforward um, camisole top design for woven fabrics um, with a v-neck it's got spaghetti straps and it's quite a straight fit. It's not got any darts. I think it's designed to be fairly loose. And there's also a larger size range available that has wider straps and darts that add a bit more shaping. Um, but this is the um, one I have. I think it's for sizes 0 to 18. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to kind of crop it off short and make it almost um, into a kind of an empire line waist an empire waist um, and then add a gathered skirt to make it into kind of like a fairly short um, pinafore to layer up um so yeah it's gonna I'm, I think I'm gonna add a bit more gathering than I did for my maxi dress so I want this one to have a little bit more body to it so I'm really looking forward to um yeah getting that finished I've already started it and if you've seen over on Instagram I've shared a sort of sneak peek of how it's going in progress but yeah it's just such a pretty fabric and I think that'll be lovely for winter layered up over like a black top um with some black tights and black boots and that sort of thing so I can't wait um to finish that one um yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun already. And um, that is, um, yeah, a rifle paper company um, cotton fabric. And yeah, it's really nice quality. I've really enjoyed sewing with it so far. And I'll be sharing that one, hopefully, in my August Makes vlog. That is one thing I am planning to get finished this month, even if I don't get to uh, many other things done. So the next fabric I've got to share isn't actually a new fabric I bought this month. It's one I've had in my stash for quite a while, but I finally um, decided what I'm going to make with it. So I thought I'd share that in this vlog. And the fabric is this one here. And it's a really lovely viscose fabric that I got from Minerva. I got it a while ago, so I'm not sure if this one's in stock still, but if it is in stock, I'll include a link below and I'll include a link to all the fabrics I mention in this vlog where I can. Um, but yeah, this one came from Minerva and it's a really nice viscose fabric. It is, um, so it's got a black base with all these really cute little daisy flowers on and it is opaque, which is great. And so yeah, it feels like a really nice quality and substantial enough, yeah, that you can make a nice dress without needing to have anything underneath to sort of, um, line it so yeah i've been i've had it in my stash for a while i've got quite a lot of it i think i might even have three meters um it was um really good value it wasn't very expensive so i thought i'd get a decent amount so i could be flexible with what i wanted to make and i've kind of been holding on to it and thinking maybe i'll use it for a toile to try out a new pattern um because i've got a decent amount so i could give it a go and it wasn't too pricey but then i thought i really do like it and i'd like to be able to make it in something i know i can definitely wear and um, I did consider it earlier in the year as one of my options um, when I was talking about frugal frocks, where I did a vlog talking all about what fabrics I might use to make a free dress pattern. Um, yes, yeah, so I considered it back then, but I didn't use it. So it's been on my mind since then. And I've been thinking I really would like to get it sewn up. And then I finally decided on what I'd like to make. And I think I'd like to make a dress using this pattern here, which is the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Co. And it's a new pattern released this year. And if you saw my um, July makes vlog, you'll know I made a version of this, quite a summery version in a cotton lawn. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed sewing it. I had to make a few changes to make it work for me. But having made a version in a cotton lawn, I thought I'd really like to give it another go in a more drapey fabric and make maybe a more wintry version. And so I thought this fabric would be just perfect. It is a viscose, so nice and drapey. And I thought the colour would be nice and wintry and it would work quite well with like black tights and black boots and things like that. So yeah, this is the Bat Davenport dress pattern. It's a really pretty pattern with lots of pretty details. It's got an elasticated um, collar bit here. So you just pull it on over your head. Um, there are no sort of buttons or zips or anything needed. It's got this little flutter shoulder detail. Then it's got a waist tie to pull in the waist. It's got a slash pocket and it's got a ruffle at the bottom and also a ruffle on the sleeves as well you can add. So loads of pretty details. Um, and I thought it'd work quite well with this pretty kind of cute fabric. And it's a really um, size inclusive pattern too. It goes from size extra small to 7X for bust 32 up to bust 60. 
So yeah, I really enjoyed sewing my first version and I think it would work really nicely in this fabric too. And so I think, yeah, I'll make a winter version. I'll aim to make this one long sleeved and I think I might crop it a bit shorter. I found my first um, Davenport dress came up below the knee on me, which is not a length that I find suits me very well. So I thought I'd maybe crop this one a bit shorter because I'm going to be wearing it with um, black tights for winter. Then I can um, make it a bit shorter and it'll be fine. So I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go. I don't know if it's one I'll actually get sewn up in August, but um, it's in the queue now and I'm pleased to have found um, a purpose for this fabric and one that I think will work really well. The next fabric I've got to share with you is for a make that I've been wanting to make for a while. And um, it's using a pattern that I made uh, quite a while ago that I've been wanting to remake. And it's this pattern here, which is the tulip skirt by Sew Over It. And it's a really pretty skirt pattern um, with a kind of um, fitted waist. And then it's got this lovely pleat um, detail at the front that kind of create this lovely tulip shape. And I made a version quite early on when I started sewing using some um, baby cord fabric. And um, you might have seen recently, I did a video called My Handmade Wardrobe Edit, where I was talking about items in my wardrobe that I thought I might hand on to other people because they weren't quite working for me. And one of the items I talked about was my tulip skirt in this baby cord fabric that I made in red baby cord. And I made it and it came up a little bit too big around the waist, um, so it never quite fitted me well. But also the baby cord was quite drapey for a kind of um, corduroy fabric, so it didn't really hold the shape of the tulip exactly as I wanted it to. So I thought um, I would ha pass on that skirt and give it another go and try to get the fit around the waist just right for me, but also to make it in a more structured fabric so that it would have a lovely tulip shape because I, even though that skirt wasn't quite right and was a bit too big and not quite the right fabric, I still wore it loads and I really liked it. But when I w wore it, I always thought I would love to make it that little bit better. So um, I finally um, found some fabric that I'm going to make my second version in and I'm going to make a red version again because I love the red of the first version. And I found this fabric on Sew Me Sunshine's website. It was a remnant piece and it was just the right amount I needed. So it felt like it was meant to be. And it's this red fabric here. And it is a Robert Kaufman Ventana cotton twill. So it's got a lovely um, twill um, effect to the fabric, as you can see, the kind of um, diagonal lines. And it's, yeah, I can't remember what the colour of red it's called, but it's really nice um, bright red. And there was just enough on the website. And I know that um, this fabric is fairly substantial. So I thought it'd be perfect for making a more structured um, tulip skirt. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. I had to look back actually at my measurements and what measurements I'd used for my first version. And I thought I'd made the smallest size in this pattern, which is a size eight, which is for size for waist 26, hips 36. Um, but I actually had made a, a size, um, well, nine, I guess. I'd kind of graded between a size eight and 10 at the waist. So I'd kind of almost um, gone for a 27 inch waist. So I don't know whether at the time I had a 27 inch waist or, or what, but it was quite nice actually, because I think what I'll do is be able to um, just size down to the pure size eight and hopefully it'll fit me just right then. I thought I might have to actually adjust the pattern pieces to make it smaller than the pattern pieces were. But I think if I size down just the pure size eight, hopefully it'll fit me just right around the waist. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, so yeah, that's the fabric. It's a kind of, um, yeah, just plain red twill fabric with a nice amount of body to it, a nice amount of structure. So that should hopefully be a fairly straightforward make. And I'm looking forward to, yeah, remaking hopefully a version that works better for me. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will be a quite straightforward one and I'll be able to get that ready to be able to wear it in the autumn because I know it's one I'll get lots of wear out of. So the next fabric I've got to share with you, I think is the cutest fabric I've got to share this month. And um, this fabric came from First for Fabrics and it is a bit more of a wintry fabric. It's actually got a Christmas print on it and I'll show you it now. It's really lovely. Um, it is a cotton jersey fabric. It's really lovely and soft and stretchy. So a lovely quality cotton jersey and it is so super cute. It has got pictures of unicorns with scarves on, little presents and rainbows and yeah, um, perfect fabric for a little girl. Or well, actually, for a big girl, I quite like it for me too. But this fabric is destined to be made in something for my daughter. And um, it was kindly gifted to me by First for Fabrics. And um, Tamlin from First for Fabrics, who um, is sewn on the tine. She's got her own YouTube and Instagram, you probably know, and I'll link her down below. And she makes um, just really gorgeous clothes for her little boy um, using some super cute fabrics. And she got in touch and said, um, would my daughter like this fabric? And would I like to make something out of this fabric for my daughter? And I showed my daughter and she absolutely adored it. I mean, who wouldn't? It's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to sew um, with this. So it's really kind of for First of Fabrics to have gifted this for me to make something for my daughter. 
and um, at the moment um, we're not sure what we're going to make um, I've been given two meters of fabric and initially my daughter thought she would like some Christmas pajamas but then she thought she might like a dress um, because then she'd be able to obviously wear it out and show people um, her cute fabric so at the moment we're in undecided um, but I'm really looking forward to getting something sewn up using this fabric as it's really nice and soft and cosy um, cotton jersey and um, yeah I, I said I'm really quite jealous actually because I would really love a pair of Christmas pyjamas in my size in this fabric. I'm really actually quite tempted to get some more <laughs> and make myself some too because I like the fact it's got a navy base as well I think it's really cute. Um, so yeah I can't wait to sew with this it is up on First of Fabrics website now in case you're interested in it. Um, and I'll include a link down below. But it's really lovely quality cotton jersey and I'm sure it's going to sew up really nicely and look gorgeous either as pyjamas or a dress. So watch this space. Once we've decided, I'll be sharing more um, photos in due course. So the next fabric I've got to share is one that might look familiar if you've seen some of my previous vlogs. And in particular, um, I mentioned earlier in this video, I did a handmade wardrobe edit vlog a couple of months ago where I talked about some items of clothing I've made that weren't quite working for me for various reasons and one of them was a dress I'd made that I'd made too short and it was just a bit uncomfortably short to wear and I made it using um, a pattern from this book Stretch by Tilling the Buttons and it was the Freya dress which I'll show you here it's a jersey dress um, quite a straightforward A-line shape with a mock neckline and long sleeves and I made a version of that in fabric I love but it had been too short and so if you saw my July makes vlog you'll see I chopped it off and turned it into a top um, but I did it with a lot of sadness because I just loved the dress. I loved how the fabric looked in a dress and um, it was one of the first things I made when I started sewing that I was just really pleased with and that made me feel really excited about being able to sew my handmade clothes. So I was quite sad to chop it off. And I'd looked previously online to see if I could get any more of that fabric and remake the dress slightly longer. But I had never been able to find anything. And then I just had a little, looked on a whim um, when I was cropping my the dress off into a top. I thought I'll have one last look online. And I happened to come across a website that had a small amount of this fabric left over. And um, it was called Sunnyside Fabrics, the website, and I'll include a link down below. Um, looking on the website, it looks like they sell a lot of quilting cotton, some really lovely um, fabrics. Um, but they happen to have a few jersey fabrics on the website, and one of them was the fabric that I'd be looking for. And it's this fabric here. I said it will look familiar if you've seen my previous vlogs, but if you haven't, then here it is. It's a really gorgeous navy blue colour fabric and it's got this lovely geometric print on with dragonflies and I just think it's really pretty and quite timeless and I love a navy blue and it's, um, it was really lovely to um, wear and it sewed up nicely and it washed well so yeah lovely fabric so I'm really happy to have been able to get some more and um, I got two, one, sorry I got one and a half metres that was all they had left um, on the website so it felt like it was meant to be so I snapped it up one and a half metres. So I'm really hoping I can squeeze a longer Freya dress out of this fabric. I think I should be able to with one and a half metres, so fingers crossed. It is a directional print and that's one thing I have got to bear in mind. So um, that'll yeah, restrict it a little bit, but wish me luck. Um, I really hope I can make a Freya dress in this fabric that'll be a bit longer. I will then have a Freya top and a Freya dress in this fabric, but I don't mind because I really love the fabric. I'm just so pleased to be able to find some. So yeah, that's um, on my sewing list. Again, it's not maybe one I might not get sewn up in August, but um, I definitely like to sew it up in time for when the weather gets a bit cooler. So yeah, I was really pleased about that. <laughs> so I've got a couple more items to share with you. I've got a couple of sewing haberdashery items that I've picked up this month. They're really cute and I wanted to share. And I've also got a couple more fabrics I'm hoping will arrive soon. Now I'm actually filming this vlog a few days before I plan to post it on YouTube because I'm a little bit out of sync with filming with the summer holidays and I had a quiet morning this morning so I knew my husband was taking the kids to the park so I thought I'd get this vlog filmed now but I'm hoping I've got a couple of fabrics that are due to arrive in the next couple of days and if they do arrive when I hope I'm hoping I can pop in a little extra bit in this video sharing those fabrics too because they're really lovely in summary and I wanted to include them. So if they do arrive in a couple of days, fingers crossed I have a chance to just pop in a little film showing you those ones. So I'll pop that video in. Hello, uh, my two fabrics did arrive in time for me to include them in this vlog. So I was really pleased about that. I was really happy when I saw the postman coming down the path with his parcel. So I've got these two extra fabrics to share with you in this vlog. So these two fabrics both came from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. And it's my second time using them. They have a, um, a shop in London and a website too. And I saw on their Instagram stories, they were doing a fabric drop of some Nobody's Child dead stock fabrics. 
and I didn't actually know much about the brand Nobody's Child. I knew it was a clothing brand, but I didn't know much else. And I went and had a little look. And it's um, they're a sustainable clothing brand. So they start try to source fairly sustainable um, fabrics and um, to keep their waste as minimal as possible. So I thought that was really good. And they had some really pretty fabrics, um, they're dead stock Nobody's Child fabrics. And I got two viscose fabrics. And they're both Eco Vero viscose fabrics, which means they're made using, um, manufactured using natural and renewable raw materials. So I thought that was really great. And they're also really good value. They were only um, 4 99 a metre, which I thought was really good value. So I got two fabrics and the first one I got two metres of. I think it was the last two metres they had actually. So I was quite pleased to be able to snap that up. But this is beautiful viscose. It's really soft and really drapey. Um, yeah, really lovely and soft. And it's a navy base with these really pretty flowers in a pink and sort of powdery blue colours. So I really like a ditzy floral. And I thought it was a really pretty one. Um, and yeah, it just feels really lovely and soft. And I think this will be nice to sew with. So I got two metres of this and I'm not sure what I'm going to turn it into. I think it'll be lovely as some sort of summery dress. And um, I think it'll make a lovely Shelby dress by True Bias, but I've made a couple of those. So I'm not sure if I want to make another or something else. But yeah, I just thought it was really pretty. I love the colours and I love the print. Um, so that's the first one I got. And the second one I got, I actually got four metres of. Um, it wasn't, the print didn't stand out to me as much as this one, but I thought it was quite pretty still. And I thought it would be nice to have in my stash um, to be able to try twirling a dress that I'm not sure of, because I do sometimes like to do a twirl and I thought it was quite good value to try that. Um, so yeah, this is what, what I got. It's a black um, black base fabric with um, different coloured floors on. They're quite pretty, um, oranges and pinks and yellows. So yeah, it's really, it's really lovely fabric. This one has a different feel to it. It's slightly less soft. Um, it feels a bit more substantial and a bit more like it's got a slight sheen to it almost. Um, but yeah, I thought it's really lovely and the colours are really vibrant. So um, I'm looking forward to having that one on hand. Um, I might turn in something, but I'm, I'm thinking it might be maybe more twirl material. I'm not sure. So yeah, those are my two fabrics from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. Um, I'm looking forward to getting sewn with this one soon. And I'll have a think about this one too. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I'm glad they arrived and I'm glad I was able to share them with you too. So hopefully there was a little video included there showing those last two fabrics I got this month. Um, if not, I'll include them in my next fabric haul video, but fingers crossed they did arrive in time for me to add them in. But now let me share with you um, the haberdashery items I got this month. So I got two sewing haberdashery items, both of them really lovely and I thought I'd share with them with you. And the first one are some buttons, which I got from Lamazi Fabrics. And I got these when I was making an order of the other fabrics I bought this month. And the order came to just below the limit for free postage. And often um, I, when I'm below the limit for free postage, I just pay the postage because I don't want to end up buying things I don't really need or want just for the sake of bumping it up. Because I don't like having too many fabrics or things hanging around that I'm not going to use. But this time, and um, there's some buttons that I've been admiring on the website for a while, so I thought it was meant to be that I added them in to get the free postage. And they're these buttons here. And these are buttons by Atelier Brunette. And they're glitter buttons. I think they're in the shade Powder. They're a really cute kind of pinky colour and they're super glittery. And yeah, I've been admiring them for a while. I don't usually buy buttons unless I have a specific project in mind. But I just thought these were so lovely and glittery and pretty that I would just love to put them on a garment of some sort. So I'm going to put them in my stash and hopefully the right fabric and the right garment will come along. I'm kind of maybe thinking of like a dress with a button up bodice or something like that. But yeah, they're super glittery and cute. And I was really glad for the excuse to add them in my basket. So yeah, I'm really glad to have those. They're really lovely. And the other item that I also got this month was a, well, I actually got two of them, is a needle minder. And if you saw my Q&A vlog um, that I posted a few weeks back, someone had asked me the question of what sewing equipment is there on my wish list. And the one thing I could think of was a needle minder because um, I'm always losing my needles. Um, and um, I'd seen some lovely ones in a recent So Hayley Jane box that are made out of resin and I thought were really pretty. And when I posted that vlog, a lovely lady called Susan had mentioned that they had some in stock um, on the So Hayley Jane outlet shop. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. So I went over there and had a look straight away and they had quite a few and they might still have some left if you go and check it out. And they were quite reasonably priced. The postage was quite reasonable too. And I got two. And here they are. Um, so they're by Resin Be Thankful, and they're included in a recent So Hayley Jane box. So they're made out of resin, which is, I think, a more environmentally friendly um, alternative to plastic. And they've got little shredded plastic bags in, and then pressed flowers. So they're really pretty, and some glitter too. And I got two, um, because I have a knitting box and a um, sewing box, and I wanted one for my knitting sort of needles I use to sew up, and then one for my sewing needles when I'm working with those. So 
yeah they were really reasonably priced and they came super fast i ordered them i think on tuesday and they came on wednesday so yeah really fast and the postage was really reasonable so i'm really pleased to have those so the final thing i had to share this month was some new yarn i'd got and um yeah i've been working on a cardigan um, early this year and it was quite a fiddly knit and quite narrow needles and I was finding it was starting to aggravate my shoulder I think because it was quite a sort of yeah fiddly involved knit and that I was doing it over and over again it was getting a bit of a repetitive strain so I thought I'd put that cardigan aside and maybe come back to it later or maybe just do a few rows every now and then so it didn't upset my shoulder too much but I do like having a knitting project on the go and particularly with us heading on holiday it would be nice to have something to do in the evenings so I got some new wool and I thought I'd have a go of making um, a cardigan loosely based on a pattern I already had and the pattern is this pattern here, which is the Downtown Cardigan by All About Amy. And it's quite a basic, straightforward knitted cardigan. It's designed to be knitted in, I think, super chunky wool. It's all in garter stitch with a bit of ribbing. And yeah, it's really quite straightforward, um, kind of almost, almost knits up in squares and then you sort of sew it together. And it was the first um, adult knitted cardigan I tried and I really enjoyed making it. But I wanted to make one that's a bit lighter weight because my version is like super cosy in the sort of chunky wool. So I bought some of this wool here which is the Wool in the Gang Super Trooper Wool. And it's a merino wool, um, which is good because um, I find that normal wool itches my skin a bit, but merino I can tolerate. Um, so I've got this merino um, yarn, Super Trooper yarn. So it's a um, worsted weight yarn. So it's lighter weight than what's designed for this cardigan. So what I'm going to do is have a little bit of a play and um, yeah, just see how I get on really. But it's a really pretty colour. It's kind of this sort of, I think it's called blush pink. It's a really soft pink colour. Um, now I made a bit of a mistake because um, I'm I'm fairly new to knitting garments for adults really and um, I'm used to knitting with chunky wool and I ordered 10 balls of this wool thinking that would be plenty because usually I guess uh, um, I'd use maybe six or seven balls for a chunky cardigan and I started knitting up and realised that it's definitely not enough wool to make an adult size cardigan um, so I um, got in touch with one of the gang and said is there any chance you have any of the same um, lot dye, dye lot number left because I know that the tone can vary quite a lot between different um, dye lots and they said they did have some more in stock so I've ordered a few more balls now so hopefully I have enough to make a cardigan so um, I'm still learning and that's a bit of a learning curve so that's hopefully going to arrive and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed it will be the same dye lot so I can carry on knitting this cardigan I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out I'm having a bit of a play which is a bit new for me with knitting so I do like to follow instructions on it um, but yeah it's just a project to tick away in the evenings um, over the next few months and definitely while I'm on holiday so that's my knitting plans. So that's everything um, I've got to share this month. Quite a few fabrics and plans, and I'm not sure how many of them I'll actually get done in August, but I'll enjoy having a bit of a sew every now and then. I do find after a busy day with my children in the holidays, even just an hour of sewing, I just find energised me a little bit, I think. I think it's just because I'm doing something for myself and something that's using a different part of my brain. And I do find it quite relaxing. So hopefully I'll get a bit of sewing in here and there and a bit of knitting in too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have got a lovely um, summer planned and we'll get some sewing time too. And um, I'm not sure about um, when I'll be posting vlogs over the summer because I have got a bit less time to do it and we are away. So I might not be posting every Saturday, but I'll hopefully be on here, um, hopefully um, yeah, over the summer popping up here and then. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a lovely summer um, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.